This video is going to cover Chapter 2, Section 1 of the textbook Think Python. You can get more information in the description below. A value is one of the basic things a program works with, like a letter or a number. And the values we've seen so far are the integers 1 and 2 and the string hello world. You and the interpreter can identify strings because they are enclosed in quotation marks. You can identify integers by the fact that they're whole numbers and floats by the fact that they're decimals. There are many more types, but these are a handful of the basics to get you started. And if you're not sure what type of value has, the interpreter can tell you by using the type function. So looking at the textbook here, uh, we've, got some, we've got some text and we've got some code. And the way that I've structured this is so that you can go to the link below in the description for the notebook and you can get your own copy of this. So you'll go to File and save a copy and drive. That link will refer to the master copy. You won't be able to edit uh, or change anything. You won't be able to run any code, but if you go to File and save a copy and drive, you'll have your own copy. You can add in notes here uh, just by double clicking and typing out your notes. Uh, this will use Markdown so you can add formatting um, like bolding things or adding uh, sections or anything like that. Um, like in here, you have this hashtag that adds a section. So you can add your notes in here. Uh, and then the convention I'm using is if you just copy a part of this comment here and you go back to you go back to the PDF and you paste this in, you'll find the text you'll find the text that precedes the code that we want to use in the notebook here in the code block. So I'm going to copy this in and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to copy this in. Notice I'm not copying the chevrons and I can show you what what happens if I do. Um, it'll run just fine, so we'll run this. <clears throat> You'll notice that only one of these things is going to be shown in the terminal. They're both being evaluated, but it's just going to evaluate and show the last statement here. And the chevrons run, and it's just fine if you add them in, but I prefer not to have them, so I'm going to remove them. Um, and then you also don't really need to copy this. This is supposed to sh uh, be like a representation of what the terminal would be showing once you run a command like this. So I'm going to copy this and just show you what happens if you if you run this accidentally. Uh, maybe if you copy and paste in a bunch of other code, you're just going to get a syntax error. So if you see this um, when you're copying and pasting any code, you can just remove it uh, and your code should run fine. So now I'm going to uh, go back to this. So I'm going to run this and I only get one of these things evaluated. If you want to if you want to get information on both maybe you're kind of building a test or something like that, you can print both of these, but actually I'm just gonna print the first one because there's a difference. When you, when you just run the type function with an argument, it's gonna just give you back the type. When you print, so when you print the function type and the argument that's being passed to it, you get class string, in this case, because hello world is a string. If we do that to, if we do that to the type 17, it's going to tell us class int. Um, so that's a good thing to know, uh, just um, you know what you're getting back and what commands do which. Uh, but if you, if you just evaluate these statements, if you just evaluate each of these statements, it's only going to, it's only going to show or do something, make visible the, uh, the second or the last statement. It'll evaluate all, all of them, but only give you this one. So now I'm going to copy in a part of this. So just again, you, you don't need the whole thing. If you try to find the whole thing, sometimes it won't work because there's like new lines and stuff that are in the, uh, um, in the textbook that might cause a problem. So uh, I'm going to copy this code. Again, I'm not copying the chevrons. I'm not copying the uh, output below here. And I'm going to paste this in. So when we run type 3.2, we get a float. So we've seen strings. We've seen oops, strings. We've seen integers int and then we're seeing float now. Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to grab this which looks very similar to this um, but we'll see that it's not. I'm going to copy that. Uh, okay so I want to grab this as well. I'm going to grab this as well. And what else we got here? So yeah I want to find that. And I'm going to grab this. All right, and that'll that'll be the code, and I'll kind of talk through all this. So, <clears throat> um, so we've seen how to check the type for strings, integers, and floats. Uh, this can be a little confusing, but I want to point a couple of things out that'll make it a little easier to determine what kind of 
uh, type you're dealing with. So you can see that we're starting here with the single quotes, just as we are with Hello World. Um, and you can see that the syntax highlighting is the same, right? It's both, both of these are this uh, like darker orange color. Um, the integer is going to be a lighter green, uh, and the, the float is also lighter green. And even though th these are these seem like the same value, they're actually different types. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just print this one so both of them show up. And then I'll just not print this one. I'll just have it return here. So we have a string for this, and we have a string for this. So even though the characters inside of the string are numbers or decimals or floats, whatever you want to call them, the fact that these quotes are here are going to tell Python that this is a string that just happens to have numeric uh, characters inside of it. So it's still going to be treated as a string. And this is not a legal integer in Python. If you want to represent this, you have to do it differently. But this is legal, so this will run. And if we run this, you see that we get what's called a tuple. So we have these parentheses here, and then we have three elements inside of those parentheses, so one, zero, and zero. And each of these elements are separated by commas here, are separated by commas. So if we, if we wanted to check the type of this, it's going to give us an error. And the biggest reason why is because Python actually sees this as three different things. These are three different values separated by commas. And if we check the type of this, in a function in Python, when you separate objects with parentheses, you're telling it those are uh, multiple arguments. So we get a type error here, and even though it doesn't, uh, it, even though it doesn't tell us um, exactly what the problem is here, it gives us enough information to know that there's there's an issue here. So to to check the type of this as a tuple, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to abstract this away, and then I'm just going to check the type of that variable. So Python is going to evaluate this variable down to the thing that it represents and tell us what type it is, and it represents a tuple. And a tuple is basically just a collection of data that you can't change after you define it, um, and it stays in order. So the order in which you define that element is the order in which it'll stay. We'll talk a little more about tuples later uh, in other chapters, but um, I want you to understand that um, there's, there's slight differences in how we interpret numbers in natural language versus how we interpret numbers as computers. So to show you how to represent a value like a million, I'm going to do the same thing here. And now we see that we get an integer. And just to experiment, I'm going to copy this and evaluate just the integer itself. We get an integer. And of course, when we remove this, we get back, we get back the actual integer that we want to deal with. So the commas are going to uh, be used syntactically in Python to separate out values. And if you try to use that to represent one integer, it's going to give you problems. It's you know, going to give you what's called a semantic error. So it's going to do what you tell it to do, but not necessarily what you expect it to do.